fifth grade, week five, scheduled for April 27th through May 1st. The goal of this week is to generate, analyze, and graph data using tables and coordinate grids. We have a new packet uh, beginning with week five, a new cover sheet I'm gonna go over with you at this time. You see here what we highlighted an arrow with an arrow there is some important information about the pacing and that it's not intended for a student to complete everything on this packet. You also see here um, the uh, arrow is pointing to the goal of the week, which is um, it's uh, about graphing, generating, analyzing, and graphing data using tables and coordinate grids. In the first section here, you see the three steps, week five and the description. And what's written there along the side is the fact that a student could begin at any particular uh, step based on readiness level. In the next section are the actual listing of the pages that are in the packet, a checklist for a student when they're done, a sample task aligned to each of the steps and can be used as a uh, self-check for the student, can they complete this task independently? And then we've also added a rubric for, do this, does the student understand this particular step? And at the bottom is important information, um, for again, to uh, for teachers to be mindful and select tasks that are appropriate for student needs, and the amount of high ready time um, should not exceed 60 minutes uh, per week. It's also asking, asking for parents to please, please consult with your child's teacher on next steps. On the second page of the packet, it also looks different. We have a uh, URL code for um, that is a PowerPoint uh, for parents with a voiceover like what you are um, hearing now. And then we also have a QR screener the bounce page app that we've discussed before, and then additional online resources that can be used by anyone since they're outside um, the realm of uh, Hillsborough County and any real world application. As you can see here, this week's focus is step one, use number patterns to solve. Step two, determine a relationship between two numerical patterns. Step three, generate, analyze, and graph data using tables and coordinate grids. So step one, use number patterns to solve. What exactly does that mean? Well, here you see a problem that, is, uh, that gives an example of what that means. So you could read through that and make sense of uh, what it means to solve uh, problems using a number pattern because that's a necessary step to applying that to a graphing task. So another example of what it means to uh, solve uh, number patterns, uh, problems involving number patterns, I should say. So this is a actually a center activity because there's, as you see here, there's lots of vocabulary. And so this is a vocabulary center that can be used in working with a partner, partner A and partner B, in connecting the table graph to the language you see there to the right. So step two involves determining a relationship between two numerical patterns. So it builds off of step one where they were developing what number patterns are. Now they're determining a relationship between them. So what would that look like? Here's a sample task. Um, you can read through all that and they're looking for a uh, relationship between the total miles run and the total miles biked. So another example of what it means to determine a relationship between two numerical patterns, this is an additional practice and you'll see lots of the, uh, one of these uh, for each of the three steps uh, in this particular, um, for this particular uh, goal, and it's more practice with um, developing an understanding of relationships between two distinct sets of data. In this case, one set of data is yards and the second set of data is feet, and what's the numerical or mathematical relationship between uh, those two sets of data. 
Step three is where were they, uh, students put it all together and, and really align to the on-level standard for this week's goal, which is generate, analyze, and graph data using tables and coordinate grids. So what exactly does that look like? Well, here you see an example. You see a table there down at the bottom, and then you see a that table. They've plotted those points from that table onto a graph, and then they have to answer uh, questions. Uh, about the graph, and also they're still determining what's the relationship between Jill's earnings and, and Robin's earnings. And uh, as you can see there on the x-axis is Jill's earnings, and on the y-axis is Robin's earnings, and what's the relationship between those two sets of data. Here is another example of step three. Again, you see a table. And they, uh, there's two distinct sets of uh, rules in this case. One rule is adding six, the other is adding two, developing an ordered pair based off of those two rules. And then they are plotting those ordered pairs on the grid or coordinate um, grid that you see there in the uh, second half of that page where they're putting all the skills together. Uh, this next piece here really is not aligned to the goal, but it's a fluency center on um, multiplication because it's really important that fifth graders by the end of fifth grade understand how to multiply multi-digit numbers. You see there page one, what, which is entitled the, the center is equivalent multiplication expressions and it can be played as a game. Gives you what you need and what to do. And page two there, is the you have to find equivalent expressions to what you see shaded in uh, the top of each section and it can't again be played as a game partner a and partner b but it's really important that fifth graders leave elementary school being fluent with or being able to multiply multi-digital numbers so uh, the last page of this PowerPoint is just to highlight our smathsmarts.com. As you see there with the thumbs up, please uh, like us on Facebook, SmathSmarts K5, or you can follow on Twitter. It has lots of videos on there that are geared towards for parents. Um, as you can see here, this where it says this video will help students and parents in Hillsborough County. So there's lots and lots of videos that you can watch that would also help you in supporting your child's um, education uh, during this uh, virtual learning platform. Thank you.